Hey, Howard Jacobson here from PlantYourself.com. Today I'm going to look at another bad study that has been adding to the confusion about food and health. It's a saturated fat and coronary risk meta-analysis from Chowdhury. It was published in March 2014 in the Annals of Internal Medicine. It got a lot of press. Time Magazine had a cover, Eat Butter. New York Times, of course, covered it. And even foodie hero Mark Bittman was fooled and he wrote Butter is Back, and he was so impressed because it's a meta-analysis that looked at 72 different studies and concluded there was no evidence of a link between the amount of saturated fat you eat and your coronary disease risk. So here's the article itself, and the conclusion is actually a little bit waffly. It talks about saturated fats and unsaturated fats, but let's just focus on the conclusion that the media drew, which is an extraordinary claim contradicting 100 years of evidence that the more saturated fat you eat, the more animal fats, whether it's from dairy or meat, is bad for your heart. And such a claim would require extraordinary evidence. And the question is, does this study achieve that standard of proof? Here's the heart of the meta-analysis, 20 saturated fat intake studies, and thanks to Fred Pollack for putting together this table. So how do we read this study? Here are the rules. RR stands for relative risk. That means how risky is it for your heart to, to consume saturated fats? If the number is greater than one, that means it's risky. If the number is less than one, it means it's protective. So, and bold means the number is statistically significant, like we should actually pay attention to it, the study was big enough, the differences were big enough, etc. So let's take a look. In these 20 studies, what did we find? There's only three that are statistically significant. Two of them show a positive relationship, that is, they found that the more saturated fat you had, the worse for your heart. And one of them, the Sweden one in the middle, found that the more saturated fat people had, the better. But all the other studies showed no difference. So there's many problems with this study. I'm just going to talk about two of them. One is the, the studies they looked at adjusted inappropriately for variables. And I'll talk about what that means. And the other is that the meta-analysis, when it compared studies, did a very poor job of it. So statistical adjustment is a, a common practice in studies designed to make them more fair. So for example, if you're looking at the effects of uh, milk consumption on mortality and one group uh, drinks a lot of milk and let's say it's little kids in school and one group drinks very little milk and it's um, octogenarians in nursing homes and we might say, well, the people in nursing homes seem to be dying more than the little kids in preschool. That would obviously be unfair, so to make it fairer, we would adjust for age. Other things that are commonly adjusted for in studies are income, education level, smoking, if it's unrelated to what we're looking at, and these all make sense. However, an inappropriate adjustment is something that actually would erase the effect you're looking for. If you wanted to hide the effects of saturated fat on coronary health and disease, what you would do is adjust for other variables that are also related to saturated fat consumption, things like cholesterol, body mass index, blood pressure, fiber intake. Well, let's take two people. One of them eats cheeseburgers all day long, the other adheres to a whole food plant-based diet. The person who eats cheeseburgers all day long takes in a lot of cholesterol. Their cholesterol would be much higher than the whole food plant eater. If we adjust for cholesterol, we're pretending that both of them have the same amount of cholesterol, as if cholesterol was unrelated to the consumption of saturated fat. So you're probably thinking there's no way that a study could have done this and gotten away with it. Well, surprise, surprise, here is a list of some of the studies and what they adjusted for. On the left is the study details, and on the right are the adjusted covariates. Let's look more closely. I've bolded in yellow the ones that shouldn't have been done systolic blood pressure, serum cholesterol, body mass index, total energy intake, and down and down and down and down the line. All these should not have been adjusted for because they are effects of high saturated fat. And if you adjust for those, then you're eliminating the effects of saturated fat on the rest of the diet. So the second problem was what the meta-analysis did with all these studies and how it compared different populations. The analysis 
involved only within study comparisons. That is to say, they studied people in Finland and they studied people in Japan, but they only compared the people in Finland to other people in Finland, and they only compared the people in Japan to other people in Japan, and they translated each population into quintiles so they could equalize the diets among the, the different groups. So let's take a look. Again, we saw that he, these were the three that were statistically significant. But remember, the, the important part of this study was that they couldn't find a significant correlation between saturated fat intake and heart disease. So let's take a look at these top two, Japan and Finland. The relative risks are very close. Neither one is statistically significant. So they're saying in Japan and Finland, they couldn't find evidence that the amount of saturated fat you ate contributed to heart disease. In, a, in other words, if we look at different quintiles, that they're basically the same. Japan and Finland tell us the same thing, that there's no relationship. Let's add one more column, which is the amount of ischemic heart disease deaths per 100,000 people age adjusted in the year 2000. And as you can see, Finland has almost five times the death rate of Japan from cardiac disease. So in fact, even though the study made it look like this, this is closer to the reality. And when we look at it even more starkly, here is the difference between Japan and Finland. But instead of showing us that difference, the study used statistical tricks to make it seem like both Japan and Finland were the same and had, there was no relationship. But when you look at Japanese people eating very low amounts of saturated fat and people in Finland eating very high amounts, you can clearly see the correlation between fat intake and heart disease. So if you'd like some more, you can go to plantyourself.com. There's videos, there's a podcast, there's articles. You can sign up for updates. You can also find me on Facebook at Plant Yourself. And thanks for watching. Be well, my friends.